August 3rd, 2024 was a beautiful day, a day of celebration, including champagne at nine in the morning, because that was the day I canceled my last Adobe app and I had to pay 14 bucks cancellation fee. What, really? Yeah, really. But you know what? Even that couldn't bring my spirit down because I had also replaced all my Adobe apps with free or cheaper alternatives. I'll link that video in the description. But anyway, that was a year ago. And my initial idea was to cancel all my Adobe apps as a test. Can I, as a creative person, a content creator, photographer, videographer, live and work without the full Adobe Creative Cloud? And many of you in the comments weren't too sure about that. You thought that I would go back to Adobe within a month. So how's it going now? What apps am I still using? And did I encounter any problems? What have I learned from being Adobe free for a year? And I also would like to encourage you to keep dropping your experiences in the comments, not for the algorithm, I mean, also for the algorithm, but you know, those comments could really help other people to make a decision because maybe you have a completely different view on this whole Adobe free situation and it's totally fine. Okay. And first I want to talk real quick about the free Adobe alternatives because since that video that I made a year ago, I've received some yeah, worrying comments about some of the so-called free alternatives. So here's the thing, there are basically two types of free Adobe alternatives, right? There's the entirely free, usually open source programs like GIMP as an alternative for Photoshop or Krida for digital painting and illustration, Shotcut for video editing or Blender for 3D modeling and animations. So truly free apps, but then there's also the second type, the programs that have a basic free version, so free but with limited functionality, and if you want to use the more advanced functions, you have to buy a premium subscription, like CapCut or Canva in video, or sometimes you have to pay a one-time fee to upgrade, like DaVinci Resolve for example. But here's the, yeah, catch I guess? Apparently, some of those subscription-based programs, and I'm not accusing any, but I am looking at you CapCut, some of those programs are starting to put more and more free features behind the paywall. So it's like they're waiting to see which free features are popular and then they put them behind a paywall. But is that really true? Can anyone give me some examples? Let me know in the comments. And if you have proof, even better. Because, you know, that's not nice. Okay, and then now, how difficult is it to switch from an Adobe program to something else? And let's start with photo editing. Let's start with Photoshop because that's the most famous Adobe program, I guess, right? Okay, look, this is my experience and I have to emphasize that this is my experience because maybe for you it's different. But for me, switching from Photoshop to Affinity Photo, what I'm using now, was mostly like it required mental effort. Because look, Affinity Photo's interface, it looks very similar to Photoshop, right? but some of the tools are not in the same place and the menus also look a bit different. Also, some features just work differently. So you have to reprogram your muscle memory basically. But a lot of the important features that I use 99% of the time, the basic features, the important ones, they work almost exactly the same. Editing raw photos, for example, or layers and how you can add adjustment layers, the clone tool, the pen tool, it's all there. You just have to use them a lot in the beginning to get used to the little differences and maybe the, you know, the locations that are different. So I haven't really missed anything. But that being said, I have to say some features are very different. You have to relearn them entirely. Some features are also not very intuitive, things that have to do with perspective, for example, but eventually, I mean, it works. And then also, if you're used to a lot of the Adobe AI features and you use them all the time, Affinity Photo is not for you yet. Maybe Luminar Neo is a better choice for you, but Affinity Photo doesn't really have AI features. So it's not like you can just cancel Photoshop and then start using any Photoshop alternative out there. You really have to do some research to find the right one for you because there's a lot of differences. So download trial versions. But yeah, all in all, I'm still super happy with Affinity Photo. It works for me. Not perfect, definitely not, but it works. And then also, I've actually also been editing a lot of my photos in DaVinci Resolve. Well, color grading mostly because Resolve supports raw files and the color grading is great, but I'll drop a separate video on editing raw photos in DaVinci Resolve soon. Okay, and then there's video editing. And I'm gonna start by saying again that 
I love DaVinci Resolve, okay? Like, my channel is built on it, it has the most powerful free version in the world also, no doubt about it. So if you want free and super professional, go for DaVinci Resolve. But here's the thing, the basic principles and workflows of video editing are, well, they're the same in every program, right? You have an audio track, a video track, you cut, you trim, uh, you add some titles. It's the same in every program. Premiere Pro, CapCut, Final Cut Pro, iMovie, the basic video editing workflow is the same everywhere. But then other features might be more difficult to learn and it's usually the more advanced features because sometimes the workflow is indeed completely different. For example, the note structure for color grading in DaVinci Resolve is something that a lot of newcomers struggle with because it's so different compared to Premiere Pro. Also Fusion for animations and visual effects which is also node-based, has a steep learning curve if you're coming from After Effects. But it's not impossible to make the switch. But from what I've read in the comments in the past year, After Effects is the real problem child or is the, the most difficult one to replace. Maybe Fusion is the problem child for... yeah, whatever. But I get it. Fusion in DaVinci Resolve, which I still think is the only real candidate as a robust replacement for After Effects, it's not easy. It's not easy to learn because it's so different if you're used to After Effects and the smaller video editors like CapCut or InVideo or Canva are somewhat limited when it comes to effects and things like that. They focus more on being easy to use and user friendly, you know, but not so much on giving all control to the user. So I really think that the more advanced you are in Premiere Pro or After Effects, the more difficult it is to make the switch because you'll have to relearn a lot more. Relearn, is that a word actually? I don't know, doesn't matter. But anyway, all that being said, I would like to know from all of you or from the people who have used both DaVinci Resolve and Fusion and After Effects, what makes it so difficult to go from After Effects to DaVinci Resolve or Fusion? Because it's difficult for me to pinpoint the exact location of the problem. So is it the simple things like masking and text tracking, things like that? Or are we talking about more advanced stuff like advanced visual effects and 3D stuff? You know, like what you see in movies. Or maybe it's both. Maybe it's just, you know, the, the general workflow, that node system. So let me know in the comments because that really might help other people to make a decision. Okay, and then graphic design. Look, even though I, I worked as a graphic designer a long time ago, I don't do a lot of graphic design anymore. Definitely not for clients. For myself, sure. And it's maybe like, you know, once every two months or something. And I've been using Affinity Designer, tried a few different ones, but Affinity Designer just works for me. It looks a lot like Illustrator, and I bought all three Affinity programs together, so I mean, yeah, that's all I can say about it. It works for me, but I'm not an expert, so there you go. Then audio. I use Fairlight. It's DaVinci Resolve's built-in audio editor and well, I think it's great. I've been using it for so long now, so I'm used to it. I like it, but I'm not an audio engineer. I'm not an audio guy. I want my audio to sound decent, of course, and I like doing the sound design when I make videos, but it's all pretty basic, the things that I do. But again, I've noticed that people who are more advanced at audio editing in Adobe Audition, that they have more trouble making the switch to DaVinci Resolve Fairlight. So we're seeing a pattern here, right? A lot of times I think it is the whole, you know, you can't teach a new dog, no, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. So again, I would like to know for people who are undecisive, people who have tried both, what makes it so difficult? Why is Fairlight not good enough? Drop it in the comments, it will really help a lot of people. Okay, so in my video that I made last year, I also mentioned that I was still looking for a PDF editor. I hadn't found one yet. And I got so many suggestions, it's crazy. And thank you for that, of course, but I have to be honest here, I haven't tried many of them. A few, yeah, but some of you also suggested to just use Affinity Photo or Affinity Publisher, which is an alternative for Adobe InDesign. And I've been doing it that way. So depending on the PDF, sometimes I open it in Affinity Photo, sometimes in Affinity Publisher. And I mean, it just works. It's a bit like the lazy workaround, but it works. So yeah, for now, PDFs solved. 
And then we have Lightroom, another big problem apparently. Now, I've already explained that I'm not a big Lightroom user, I never was, even when I was full-time into photography, but I've seen a lot of suggestions in the comments and I've been checking them out and it seems like the one that always comes back, the best value for money is the one that also has a user interface that looks a lot like Lightroom and it's on one photo raw. It's not free, but it's a one-time payment and it seems like a lot of professional photographers like it as an alternative for Lightroom. Also in the comments, it keeps coming back, you know, so it seems like a good alternative. But not everyone likes it. Here's a comment from Steven, for example, who says it's close, but not close enough for him. And look, that's the problem, right? It's so subjective and everyone's workflow is different. So all I can say really, again, is always download trial versions of every program you wanna try. Never rely on what someone else says. I can suggest you something, but you know, it might not work for you. For example, a lot of people have told me in the past year that they don't like Affinity Photo. It sucks, but I love it. I mean, yeah, what can I say? See the problem? And this is another comment that I see popping up almost every day since I made that video a year ago. Adobe is irreplaceable. It's the industry standard. And also this one, I'm not gonna be able to find a job if I don't use Adobe. And look, okay, I get it. Adobe is indeed an industry standard, but it's not irreplaceable. It all depends on your personal work situation and workflow and you know, things like that. If you work in or for a company that requires you to use Adobe, then yeah, sure, I get it. You're gonna have to use Adobe but there are plenty of solo creators, photographers, videographers, and if that's you, you can use whatever you want, right? But you know what the problem is, in my opinion? Are you ready to give up Adobe in here? Are you ready to yeah, flip the switch in here? That's the important question you have to ask yourself. And I also know that when you cancel Adobe, they give you this warning that says you might not be able to open files created in Adobe programs anymore when you start using something else. You know, to scare you, but for me, that hasn't been a problem at all. I've been able to open all my old PSD photo files in Affinity Photo with layers and everything, no problem. And even opening a Premiere Pro project in DaVinci Resolve is possible. It's a bit more tricky, especially if you've used a lot of effects and things like that, you know, they might not transfer 100% perfectly, but it is possible. So, you know, it all depends on how deep you are in the Adobe ecosystem. How many programs are you using? What tools do you use the most? And how advanced are you? But also, how deep are you mentally in the Adobe ecosystem? Are you ready to go Adobe free in here? Ask yourself that. And so, yeah, I'm still Adobe free and I like it, but you know, I don't think that Adobe programs are bad at all. It's just that, you know, if you're like me and for photo editing, for example, you use only the most basic features, then it just feels annoying that you have to pay month after month for updates that, you know, that you don't use. When it comes to photo editing, I still use the same features I was using 10 years ago. But that's me, of course, and that's the problem. It's different for everyone. But I like the system where, you know, for creative programs, I pay a one-time fee for a set of features, and then if they do in a year or two years or three years, they decide to do a big update, they can ask me for an update fee. But I should still be able to use that old version that I was using. They shouldn't lock me out of that one. You know what I mean? So if I decide that I don't want to update and all the new features, I can still use the old version. And that's also the structure that Blackmagic Design was hinting at for DaVinci Resolve in the future, maybe. But yeah, I don't know, but I get it. Companies have to pay their people, they have to make money, you know? But an exclusively subscription-based software is not a good fit for everyone, in my opinion. So I think that happy medium of a one-time fee and then paying for updates, I think that could work. But let me know what you think, because I know that canceling Adobe is not so straightforward for everyone. It worked for me, but maybe not for you. So let me know in the comments, what is your experience? Let me know, drop it in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.